Monday, May 20th, 2019. I'm currently in Maryland, working my way toward Pennsylvania. Probably be there in a couple hours. But my goal this week, aside from spending some much needed time with family, is to thoroughly go over the contents of my Jeep. I want to spend some time at my storage unit, swap some things out, move other things in, and try to lighten my load a little bit. I'll also probably turn some wrenches to prepare for my appointment at OK Four Wheel Drive next week and get ready for the next leg of my journey into the Northeast. It's Monday night and I'm back in Pennsylvania. I'm spending the evening on my friend's property, Heritage Tree Farm. Shout out to Chris, Chanel, Harper, and Jacob for letting me pop the camper here. I can't thank you guys enough. As soon as I got here, I drove straight to visit my son, Cole. He knew I would be coming back soon, but he didn't know that I'd be here tonight, so I surprised him and it was priceless to see his reaction when he got off the school bus. We spent some time hanging out, we went to get a bite to eat, and I plan to spend as much time as I can with him before I leave the state again. For now, I'm going to settle in, watch some Netflix, and call it a night. I'll get up bright and early tomorrow morning, head over to my storage unit, and start rummaging through my gear. It's Tuesday morning in Lancaster City. I'm freshly caffeinated and off to my storage unit. Gross. I don't quite know where to begin. Mostly I want to take stuff out of the Jeep and move it into storage, but I kind of want to rummage through the storage unit too. I guess I'll just figure it out as I go. All right, toilet, stove, blanket. They all stay. Camp table stays. Camp chair. Camp chair stays, but this bag is shot. I'm gonna see if I can find another bag in there. Screen room for my awning, that stays. This ladder, I never ever used this. This was to get my kayak up and down, but I'm just too lazy to pull it out and I just stand on my tiptoes. My shower shelter. I very, very seldom use this too. I, the last time I used it was over a year ago at Overland Expo West 2018. And uh, I don't know how I feel about it. If I ever need to take a shower someplace where I need privacy, then I'm gonna wanna have this, but usually I just take a shower behind a bush or something. I have this old North Face day pack hanging here in the corner. I like having the storage here, but it's mostly just a catch-all, so it's filled with miscellaneous items. I definitely need to go through that.
This is food and cooking supplies. This big bin is also a catch-all for miscellaneous items and I need to go through it. Bug repellent, I never use this, but it's good to have. Extra shoes in plastic bags. These are absolutely coming out. I have never used them in two years. Pelican container, I use this often. Binoculars, sometimes. Use that, hammock stays. Toothbrush, toothpaste, deodorant. Bear spray, fire suppression. Nog Champa, tripod. Trimming wire. I don't need this. Propane. GoPro accessories because it makes sense that they'd be stored together. Adventure hat, more GoPro stuff. My boots, keeping those. This is recovery gear, it stays. As I travel, I acquire lots of hats and t-shirts, and I like them all, but I have to be real about this. I always say think like a backpacker, so between three and five t-shirts is ideal. Maybe five. I think I wore this only once, and it is wonderfully warm, but I always struggle when it comes time to um, number two. So I'm going to sideline it and put it in storage. Dana drive shaft, which I better take with me just in case. Uh, this is bungee cords, straps for hanging hammock, tent mallet tent stakes, all that can stay. All right, these are things that I can file, receipts, bank documents, service records. Now that I have this dedicated space, I'm putting insurance and registration up in here. So no more rummaging through the glove compartment. Contents of my center console, mainly just keychains, pens, a lot of charge cables, miscellaneous, lens cap. This front pouch is filled with extra grocery bags. I've got flex seal as seen on TV just in case. Got a stack of business cards, air fresheners, ARB tire repair kit for when you get a puncture. I'm relocating my flat repair kit to my recovery gear compartment. Fits very nicely. Bathroom items, like aspirin, 
razor, comb, extra coffee, 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 newspaper to help start campfires, toilet paper, a bin that has chemical bags, tissues, business cards, KitchenAid coffee grinder, sandwich bags, well that box is in bad shape, trash bags, Ziploc bags, hand warmers, this whole thing is just a big bin of miscellaneous. Okay, I have these things streamlined a good bit. Uh, I still have my bags in here. I moved my newspaper for starting fires into here. Um, I put the baggies in the compartment down at the bottom of the big bin and a toilet paper. The flex seal is now in here. I put the coffee and my detergent in this extra bag in this tub and my extra bathroom items, contact lens solution, etc. right here. So it's still a miscellaneous bin, but it's tidied up nicely, so I'm okay with that. I would absolutely love to take my bike, but it's just too much. This is a little thing, but I'm replacing my camp chair bag with a donor because this one has expired. Perfect. I'm still extremely torn about this. My Kelty Blockhouse shower shelter, I never use it, but all it's gonna take is once in a crowded campground I'm going to want to shower and I'm not going to have privacy. If I don't have it, I'm going to regret it. It's so bulky though. I think I need to take it. Another thing that I'm reluctantly sidelining is my Scottle in favor of going with just my Coleman stove. I love the Scottle, but the fact is it's a luxury item and my goal here for the next leg of my journey is fine tuning and minimalist. I can't think of anything else I might need in here. The back of the storage unit is a mess. You try to be tidy and organized, but there's always that last pile of stuff that turns it into a disaster. I'm not going back there. was a huge success. It might not look that much different from the outside, but I feel like I've freed up a ton of space. It's more dialed in now than it's ever been. It's Wednesday morning, May 22nd. I'm in Wrightsville, Pennsylvania at Susquehanna Chrysler Dodge Jeep. This is actually where I purchased my orange Rubicon a little bit over three years ago. But the first thing that I did when I got back to Pennsylvania, other than visit Cole, was I made an appointment here to get my PA state inspection renewed. So it's in there right now, they're taking care of that and looking at a couple other minor issues. 
In the meantime, I'm just going to walk around and hang out here for a little bit and check out some of the new vehicles. I'm with Jesse Harden, sales manager at Susquehanna Auto, and he took me out in this 2020 Gladiator Rubicon. Really nice truck. Can you tell me about the vehicle? Sure. What we're going to be looking at today is, like you said, a 2020 Gladiator Ruby. Uh -huh. um, it's pretty much fully loaded. The only thing it really doesn't have is a forward-facing camera. Okay, so this is the Rubicon model, which in many ways is similar to my 2013 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. I mean, this is going to have much of the same equipment as the JK and the JL Rubicon, because a lot of that stuff did sort of carry over. Yeah. Like the 410 gears, the heavy duty axles onto it. And then when you step up to the Rubicon from your JK to the JL, that's when you start getting like your full width axles. So mm -hmm. it does help with your turning radius. Mm -hmm. And then also with the Rubicon, you do get your Fox shocks. So again, smoother ride on road and also off road. Uh -huh. And this one, this particular one has the all train tires onto it from Falcon, which are still pretty meaty for an all-terrain tire and yeah, they yeah. actually were really quiet on the road. All right, now we're at the business end of the Gladiator. Pretty much what makes a Gladiator or Gladiator is the bed and everything that you can do with it. You do have your regular flat four round seven connectors. You do have your regular tow hooks that now are on both sides of the truck so you have extra tow points. And then as for the tailgate, you do have the easy open tailgate now. Um, Ford Rubicons, you do have the LED lighting inside, it's bright night so it's a lot easier to see. Your 115 power outlet, your adjustable uh, tie down points that can go on all three sides. So you can move them the whole way up onto the front of the uh, bed there. No, you're in full drive high. Okay. I'm actually, I should have told you up on the... Okay, it says too high. Yep. Okay, that's four low, four high, that's too, too high. high. Yep. Sorry for trying to jam you into gear when you're already there. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it on my own. Because on the JK, is up a little bit farther. Yeah. Yeah. So recreational four-wheel drive enthusiasts, the first thing that they mention is the length and the breakover angle, which is the angle of space between the front and rear axles, and it's long. It is a long vehicle, so it might not necessarily be your first choice for a rock crawler, but if you are into mobile living, overland travel, the bed in the back here introduces a lot of opportunities for different living arrangements. Obviously, one of the biggest hurdles with this vehicle is the high price tag. You are spending a lot of money, but you are getting a lot of out of it too. Yeah. What's the uh, the price point this is at? Sixty one. Sixty one. Yep. Cool. I dig it. You had a good time. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for taking the time to You're give welcome. us a tour. Anytime. And if anybody's interested in our, on the vehicle, just check it out on our website at SusquehannaAuto.com. All right. All right. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Have a good one. I like the Gladiator a lot. And I want one, but I could do without a lot of the bells and whistles that raise its price point. If I had one, I'd want to remove the bed entirely and put a living box in the back. Something that's lightweight, but offers more living space than what I have now.
So the Jeep was doing two things. At around 2,000 RPM, usually around 60 miles per hour, the Jeep would buck like this. It would be once and done, and it's been doing that for quite some time. I thought that the spark plugs I got a while back would have fixed it, but no, it kept going. And also, at traffic lights with the air conditioning on, it would just stall. I'd be sitting there, it'd be idling, and the engine would just shut off. So I had the dealer look into these issues, and my computer wasn't showing any trouble codes, but they thought to replace the crank sensor, the cam sensor, and also flash the PCM with new software, and that seems to have fixed it. So I'm happy about that. I got a PA state inspection, my tires rotated, and it wasn't quite as costly as I thought. So I'm happy, it was a productive day. It's Thursday morning and I'm at my parents' house in their garage. Today the work on the Jeep continues. I'm going to change the front bumper configuration to prepare for my winch next week. I'm going to make adjustments to the wiring for my CB radio. And I'm also going to repair the mouse damaged battery cables under the hood. The pronghorn bumper is coming off because this particular configuration does not have accommodations for my winch selection. I was in touch with the company and they told me that they have a future product coming out that will fit my winch, but I needed an immediate solution. But my experience with the pronghorn alpha has been extremely positive. It's heavy duty aluminum, very lightweight. I dig the utilitarian styling and it's very customizable. I'm sad to be parting ways with it, so I'm going to return this to OK Four Wheel Drive when I head over there next week. I put a lot of thought into getting another aftermarket front bumper, but I already had this. I know you can fit a winch mounting plate on top of it, and I asked myself, would a new bumper enhance my experiences? And no, it really wouldn't. So I'm keeping it simple, keeping it lightweight, and saving a little bit of money. All right, so even though I went with my lame old bumper, I'm gonna get a winch here next week, and I got a nice new set of lights for these sockets. The next issue should be extremely simple, but I've made this ridiculously involved to fix. When I first installed my CB antenna, it was right here. And then I upgraded to the TerraFlex hinge, and now my CB antenna mounting location is over here. So it comes out of the tailgate here, and I have the extra cable balled up under the dashboard. Meanwhile, my goose gear is installed over this, the tailgate table is installed over this. I barely even use my CB radio, but I want to do this right, even though it's such a major pain in the butt. Okay, there's the Cobra CB radio itself with the microphone, display, controls. Behind the glove compartment is the radio module. You can see the antenna cable coming out of it. I think I was mistaken. There is no excess cable down here. I 
I don't even use the CB radio. There are better forms of radio communication, but it's about the principle of the thing. So I'll get this fixed up without buying an extension cable, which would have been the easy solution, and put everything back together and everything will be right. Well, there is no excess anywhere, so the only solution would be to feed the antenna cable through this hole instead of this hole, and that should buy me enough length. One small problem. I am going to enlarge this hole and touch it up in a way that is very professional and clean. But I'm not gonna show this. Let us never speak of this. This is going to need tested and tuned, but I don't have the equipment or the experience, so I'll find a CB shop somewhere on the road. I got the CB antenna mounted, and I buttoned up the interior, but then I had to scramble because it started to rain, and I'm meeting Cole, his mom, and her husband for dinner. So I'm on the road right now. I didn't get to everything that I wanted to get to. I think it's been over a year since I even touched this thing. It's Thursday night and I just got done with dinner with my family. I'm gonna call that a wrap for this week. It was a totally productive week in terms of cheap maintenance. It feels like an entirely new vehicle, especially with those sensors replaced. Next week, I'll be heading over to OK Four Wheel Drive in Stortsville, New Jersey for some new gear, including a winch, lights, air compressor, and on Thursday night, between 6 and 8 p.m., you're welcome to join me to hang out. I'd love to meet you and share stories. As always, thank you everyone for following along. I'll catch up with you next week.